Welcome to the 25 Funniest Political TV Commercials, presented by Campaigns and Elections magazine. Most of these commercials, in their time and context, helped turn losers into winners and winners into losers. They made voters laugh, and they made a lot of politicians cry. Year to year, election to election, humor has always found its place in American politics. And for the most part, democracy is better for it. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Let's put Paul Coverdale in the Senate and put Weiss Fowler out. Weiss has proved we don't need him in it and Georgia wants him out. But with Paul Coverdale, we'll have a leader of that, there is no doubt. So vote Paul Coverdale in the Senate and put Weiss Fowler out. Now Paul needs a catchy jingle, so y'all use that. We've got to get rid of White's Fowler. He's just like Ted Kennedy. Come on, y'all, and sing along with Newt Gingrich. Congressman Newt Gingrich bounced 22 checks for more than 26 grand. With a bounce check here and a pay raise there, here a check, there a check, everywhere a bounce check. Newt Gingrich wrote a rubber check to the IRS. That check bounced like all the rest, this time for nine grand. With a bounce check here and a pay raise there, here a check, there a check, everywhere a bounce check. Because bouncing checks is such hard work, Newt raised his pay 40,000 a year. With a bounce check here and a pay raise there, here a check, there a check, everywhere a bounce check. 22 bounce checks and 130 grand a year, I bet you thought that was all. But don't look now, here comes Newt Gingrich in his $67,000 chauffeured limousine. With a bounce check here and a pay raise there, here a check, there a check, everywhere a bounce check, bounce check here and a pay raise. Among Washington's BMWs and limos is this. Since 1971, the old Pontiac has served its owner well. Sure, it's rusted and it burns a little oil. But after 15 years and 238,000 miles, Tom Daschle still drives his old car to work every day. Maybe he's sentimental or just cheap. Whatever the case, isn't it too bad the rest of Washington doesn't understand that a penny saved is a penny earned. Hi, I'm Russ Feingold, the underdog who's running for the United States Senate. Underdog, that's the story of my life. They said a kid from Janesville would never win a Rhodes Scholarship, but I did. They said I couldn't beat an incumbent state senator, but I did. Now they say I won't be your next United States senator. I don't have a fortune to spend on expensive TV commercials like my opponents. But I don't think wild spending is what people want in a senator anyway. I think people want a senator who's in touch with the problems of ordinary families, and I believe that's me. I think these home movies will prove it. Our first home belongs to millionaire Joe Chakota. He's one of my opponents. Let's see if he's around. Wow, look at these iron gates. I guess there's nobody here. Nice spread, huh? It's enough to make anyone feel like an underdog. The next home belongs to Congressman Jim Moody, my other opponent. This is his home in Washington, D.C. He's lived there for years, but he does visit Wisconsin. The congressman has another home in Jamaica, but we don't have the budget to fly there, so this brochure is going to have to do. I'm just the opposite. I visited Washington, D.C., but I live right here in Middleton, Wisconsin. And if you elect me, I'll continue to live right here. That's one of the three pledges I made when I decided to run for the United States Senate. They're all here in writing on my garage doors. The other two are that I will rely on Wisconsin citizens, not out-of-staters to pay for this campaign, and I'll accept no pay raise during my six-year term in office. Come on, let's go inside. Hey, here's the kitchen, the hallway. We've got plenty of closet space. What? No skeletons. Now, here's the family room. My wife and I work hard to pay for this, and uh, we don't have a lot of money to throw around. Money isn't what I really need. What I need is your vote. And you can't buy votes in Wisconsin anyway. Time after time, good people without a lot of money have won elections here. Why? Because Wisconsin likes underdogs. Dad? Yeah, Ellie? Can I go to Cheryl's house? Well, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Wisconsin can't afford anything less than fine gold. Ever wonder what lieutenant governors do? They call important meetings. Stand by for the governor. Dedicate buildings and perform other important functions every day. John Kerry can do more than that.
As a leader of veterans, he helped end a war. As a prosecutor of criminals, he never lost a case. John Kerry really made something out of those jobs, and he'll make something out of this one. Vote John Kerry, because the lieutenant governor really ought to be part of the government. As a congressman, Ron Marlinay has dumped over 700,000 pieces of junk mail on Montana this year. On election day, it's our turn to send Ron Marlinay a message. My job was to find D. Huddleston and get him back to work. Huddleston was missing big votes on Social Security, the budget, defense, even agriculture. Huddleston was skipping votes but making an extra $50,000 giving speeches. I just missed him when D. skipped votes for his $1,000 Los Angeles speech. Let's go, boys. We got him now. I was close at D.'s $2,000 speech in Puerto Rico. Give me to D. Huddleston. Thank you very much. We can't find D. Maybe we ought to let him make speeches and switch to Mitch for senator. Hi. I think you all know this bald fellow. Tall fellow. You know, whenever we need a hard-working senator, Pat Lee is always there to help. Yeah, and now he's awfully close to being chairman of the U.S. Senate Agriculture Committee. And if you farmer have any idea what this means for Vermont, you know no, what to do. What to do. Maybe I ain't that smart, but when Judge Hollenbach tells me he cut my taxes, he don't credit me with as much horse sense as Nell has. And since he's been judged, the taxes of my house are nearly 50% higher. <laughs> Who's he think he's kidding? Maybe Judge Hollenbach should have my job. Because in my business, I deal with that kind of stuff every day. <coughs> You, sir, uh -huh. how do you feel about Governor Rockefeller's Pure Waters program? His Pure what? Pure Waters. Oh, yeah. This uh -huh. program, sir, is wiping out water pollution in New York State yeah. within six years. Wait a minute. He's supposed to be interviewing me. Already, 130 new sewage treatment plants are getting underway. Yeah, well, it was pretty smelly down here. State health officers are working overtime, tracking down sources of pollution. Listen, they should see what happened to my cousin. Ah, oh, who? My cousin had a brilliant career. By the end of the summer, the governor will have called in every major polluter for a hearing. Well, I would say that next to a fish, I would say he's the best governor we can Over have. 70 cities and industries have agreed to correct violations. Frankly, though, uh, my problem with Rockefeller is some of his best friends are fishermen. Who came up with Jim Martin's 1988 state budget? It was the worst one ever, 120 million in the red. And it was the first unbalanced budget ever proposed by a North Carolina governor. Martin's own budget director once said the governor's not a businessman. No kidding. But he's some politician trying to get votes by monkeying with the budget. Had enough monkey business? Bob Jordan for governor. Fox McKithen watching over tax dollars is like a fox guarding a hen house. The New Orleans Times Picayune wrote, Fox McKithen has abused his power. The Lake Charles American Press called his first term a catastrophe. The Baton Rouge Morning Advocate compared the scandals in his office to those of Watergate. And the Shreveport Journal said McKithen's behavior was causing dismay and distrust among the voters. Don't let McKithen outfox you. Vote for Doug Schmidt, Secretary of State. 
Ever since this race began, D. Huddleston has been running away from his record. But now Kentucky is closing in. Against school prayer, give away our Panama Canal. D. runs and D. hides. But we're going to catch him. It's time you face your record. Mr. Great Embargo. No wonder he's running from his record. But he can't run forever. Get boys, come on. We got you now, D. Huddleston. Switch to Mitch McConnell for U.S. Senate. Excuse me, uh, what do you think about a West Virginian running for governor of New York? Is that like, is that a question or is that a statement? Eh, don't make no sense neither way. I think it's preposterous. I think it's ridiculous. Crazy. It's crazy. I mean, really. I mean, I... <laughs> You've got to be kidding. A West Virginian is governor of New York? How about it? That makes as much sense to me as having the next governor of West Virginia be a New Yorker. Democrats have paid for this message to re-elect a good governor. If you like the way they fix potholes, you'll love the way they run the utility company. On May 4th, vote against Proposition 1, the billion-dollar public service takeover. Hi, I'm Russ Feingold, the underdog running for the U.S. Senate. The last few weeks, my opponents have been taking shots at one another. While they've been discrediting each other, I've been issuing my 82-point plan to eliminate the federal deficit and I've been talking to you voters about the need to establish long-term care for the elderly and disabled, plus a national health system. How have I kept clean of all the mudslinging? Simple. I refuse to stoop to this level. Vote Feingold on September 8th. Uh-oh. I must be gaining on him. Things get pretty exciting when Texas Senate candidate Richard Harvey flies into town. Because Richard Harvey holds the world's record for belly landings at Tyler Pounds Field. Harvey has slid in with the wheels up not once, but twice. Now we can understand one mistake, but when Harvey specializes in belly landings, we wonder. If Richard Harvey can't get his wheels on the ground in Tyler, how's he going to get his feet on the ground in Austin? Good morning. I'm from New Jersey. Here's today's garbage. I'll just dump it right here. Sound crazy? That's what states like New Jersey do to us every day. Have a beautiful day. Senator Dan Coates says stop. Their garbage costs us money, pollutes our land and water, and we barely have enough space for our own garbage. But Washington won't let us keep it out. The Dan Coates bill give Indiana the right to slam the door on out-of-state garbage. Everywhere you look these days, the federal government is there, telling you what they think, telling you what they think you ought to think, telling you how you ought to do things, setting up rules you can't follow. I think the federal government is going too far. Now they say, if you don't take the portable facility along with you on a roundup, you can't go. We need someone to tell them about Wyoming. Malcolm Wallop will. Hi, I'm Russ Feingold, the underdog running for the United States Senate. If things are going to change around here, this man must be defeated in November. Incumbent Senator Bob Caston. Now, I like to run a positive campaign, but the senator doesn't. That's why Bob Caston's supporters hope I lose. You see, not much has been written about Russ Feingold to attack, unlike my two opponents in the primary. So to run against me, the only option is to make something up. And you voters know better than to believe everything you read. I don't make many appearances, but when I heard the state senator Russ Feingold was telling tales how I endorsed him, I had to come forward. Russ has been in politics for a decade, and in that time, he's made quite a record. You know, Feingold's record on taxes has a little number that would raise our taxes over $300 billion. Well, the king would never support that. And Feingold was even opposed to a constitutional amendment to balance the budget, something y'all are for. And take it from the king. This Russ Feingold record has got me all shook up. In a 
Saturday Evening Post article dated August 31st, 1963, Barry Goldwater said, Sometimes I think this country would be better off if we could just saw off the eastern seaboard and let it float out to sea. Can a man who makes statements like this be expected to serve all the people justly and fairly? Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. Now, Jim, we sent you to Congress to get things done and to vote right. But you haven't even passed one bill. Huckabee passed 16. You voted for a $135 billion tax increase. Huckabee voted no. You voted against Medicare, against the middle income tax reduction, against unemployment benefits. Huckabee voted yes. And in the middle of a recession, you voted yourself a $35,000 pay raise. Huckabee voted against it. What's the matter with you, Jim? Jim? Hello? John Bro has been waiting and waiting to debate the real issues of jobs and our economy. Tell Henson Moore it's time to come out of hiding. Vote Stevenson, vote Stevenson, a man you can believe in, son. From Illinois, whence Lincoln came, his leadership has won him fame. A soldier man is always bound to think in terms of battleground. But Stevenson, civilian son, will lead us till the peace is won. This is Jackman Wolf with the greatest hits of that great song and dance man, Ed Chow. Chow will tell you anything. You remember his classic about toxic waste? Caught in a dump, I can't clean it up Cause I took too much money, baby Oh, what about? How many times can a man change his mind? In front of time And who could ever forget? Do the shop up, flip flop We'll give you additional Shao flip-flops for free. Like that never been previously released in the U.S. in the national hit. I'd send the box to Nicaragua. Never in one place, at one time, by one fantastic performer. So many great flip-flops. And it's available for a limited time only. Because on election day, November the 4th, the Shao song and dance comes to an end. This is the magazine more and more people are talking about, campaigns and elections, the only one of its kind. It features the hottest techniques, trends, and strategies of American politics. It spotlights the movers and shakers and follows the rising stars. Give us a call today about subscribing. At $29.95, it's the best deal in American politics. And also ask us about our popular training seminars. Be a winner at campaigns and elections. Congressman Newt Gingrich bounced 22 checks for more than 26 grand. With a bounce check here and a pay raise there, here a check, there a check, everywhere a bounce check. Newt Gingrich wrote a rubber check to the IRS. That check bounced like all the rest, this time for nine grand. With a bounce check here and a pay raise there, here a check, there a check, everywhere a bounce check. Because bouncing checks is such hard work, Newt raised his pay 40 thou a year. With a bounce check here and a pay raise there, here a check, there a check, everywhere a bounce check. 22 bounce checks and 130 grand a year. I bet you thought that was all. But don't look now, here comes Newt Gingrich and his $67,000 chauffeured limousine. 